Hello there. It is your old friend, Adam Pearson, co-owner of Fortunato Chocolate. If you like fine chocolate, please check out the link in the description below, www.fortunatochocolate.com, along with my dad and my brother. We have been buying a rare variety of cacao in the jungle of Northern Peru for going on 16 years now. I'm also the author of a forthcoming book. I have my camera on reverse, so I'm never sure which way I'm supposed to lean. Let's go with this way. Finding Fortunato. It'll be published on June 4th, 2024. I wrote it. I'm proud of it. It's about our time doing business with cacao farmers in the northern Peruvian jungle. It's about my brother's 10 years living full time in the jungle and how a bunch of dudes from San Diego, California ended up doing business in the jungle of northern Peru and all of the wild adventures that we went on along the way. Okay, <clears throat> here's the premise of this of this channel and the reason that I'm talking to you in this video. I guess I'm gonna, at the beginning of each of these videos, give a little explanation until maybe I become a bit more of a, a known quantity so that you know why exactly you might wanna take the time to hear, to hear what I have to say. Um, all right, I've been a business owner for 16 years. I have built up two businesses from nothing to each having dozens of employees and each are multi-million dollar a year businesses. I don't know how I was able to do that. Mostly I was able to do that uh, just, just through perseverance. But um, so what I know about is business. I know about entrepreneurship. I've been married to the same woman for 20 years and I love her now more than when I got married to her. I have three sons, ages 11, eight, and five. So I know something about, about raising little boys. I know a lot about chocolate. When I was 30, I'm 41 now. When I was 38, I um I started writing a company newsletter and I caught the writing bug and I love to write. I'm passionate about writing. And also, uh, 642 days ago, I set a writing goal to write for a thousand days a row in a row. And that led to this book here, the covers behind me uh, getting getting published and it's coming out June 4th. And in addition to that, I've written 641 articles. So here's the the reasoning behind why I'm filming filming these videos it's going to be a little circuitous circuitous i'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that word but please please try to try to bear with me and i'll do my best to explain it since i've had kids what i am realizing is that a lot of the values and ideas and habits that us adults take for granted our kids our kids are not born with them and i'm just realizing now that culture values the lessons of prior generations, they do have to be taught anew if you're going to maintain culture. And in, and in my case, my, my own viewpoint of the world is that what you really want in a good, well-functioning society is peace. You got to keep the peace. You need hard work to continue to main, you know, maintain the infrastructure and the economy. So you need people who work hard. We got to keep the peace. We all got to get along together. That's part of keeping the peace. And if you're in, if you're in the United States, you're born with the, the idea of loving freedom in your heart. I'm not, you know, th that's, that's all of this stuff is sort of um, like supra political. It's above politics, but those are just some things that I believe in and what I'm, what I'm, and also let's compassion, empathy, loving your neighbor as you love yourself, community, family, friendship, the values of humanity. So all of that stuff doesn't regenerate itself automatically. And if we want, a lot of these values that we hold dear to continue to exist in the world, which will repropagate well-functioning societies, people need to need to pass their lessons along. And so all of the lessons that I have, everything I know is either in the 641 days worth of, so pardon me, no, I haven't written yet today while I'm recording this. Everything I know about the world is either in the 641 days of writing or in the book that's behind me. And I have, I've written it and I've sent it out to the people who read them. By the way, if you want to subscribe to the newsletter, you can do so by clicking on fortunatochocolate.com in the description. And then down at the bottom of the homepage, you can subscribe to the daily newsletter I write every single day. Um, so everything I know, the lessons that I have, the lessons that I have to give, my part, the part that I could play in trying to maintain this thing that we call society and culture is by sharing the lessons that I've that I've picked up and that I've written down and what I don't want is for all of this stuff to, I send it out once, people read it, and then it disappears forever. So I just figure at least if I get it on video and I put it online, then maybe somebody down the line will pick it up 
and I can just do my little part, lay my one little brick on the foundation that that a well-functioning society can can be built on top of. And that's something we could all do in our own in our own way. But this is just the way that I have concluded that I am that I'm able to do my part. All right. So I prefer writing as a method of communication. I feel like I can express myself much more clearly in writing. Like right now, I'm talking. I had an idea of what I wanted to say, but I I'm not a I don't feel I'm able to say exactly what I want to say. And I can't make it as beautiful as I would like to make it unless I write it down first. So what I'm going to be doing in these videos is you'll get a little introductory, um, a little like, like you see this, I'm already getting hung up on my words here because I don't have it written down. You get some introductory remarks from me, but really the what's going to happen is I'm going to read a piece of writing from the library of over 600 articles that I've written over the last 641 days. And that way um, they'll be there for posterity. And then if, if you like them, then you could, oh, by the way, if you like them, then you can subscribe and you'll get a notification every time I put out a new video. Or if you hit the like button, I'd appreciate that. And then if you like them and you like what I have to say, then you'll just know that there's many, many, many more, <laughs> so many more where this came from. So without further ado, let me go ahead and read this. I wrote this one on September 22nd, 2002. So, you know, more than a year and a half ago, more than a year and a half ago, I own two chocolate shops. In addition to, we have our e-commerce site. Um, we own two retail locations. And to promote our retail locations, I spent I spent over a year walking around our neighborhood every afternoon, either handing out flyers or with a sign, inviting people to come to our shop and drink a free hot chocolate. And I picked up a lot of stories. I picked up a lot of stories walking around in the neighborhood. and And this is one of them. So here we go. Without further ado, it isn't the most dignified distinction in the world but I believe that I may be the world's foremost expert on human parking lot behavior. There is very likely not another person in the world who spends as much time as I do walking around parking lots talking to people. I assure you that this is not how I expected my life to turn out. But to be honest, it is way better than anything I could have imagined. I really like people and I find them fascinating. Being able to interact and observe folks in a very unscripted and spontaneous environment is a source of never-ending intellectual stimulation for me. I've tried every marketing tactic you can imagine over the last couple of years. Social media, newspaper advertising, text messaging, postal mail, TV and radio. Listen, I'm a perfect mark for somebody selling advertising because I'm interested in trying everything. It is my job to make sure that folks know about us so that we can sell our chocolate and keep buying more and more cacao from our cacao farm partners in Peru. Along those lines, I am not willing to leave any stone unturned. I need to know what works. And it turns out that walking around and talking to people face-to-face -face in parking lots is far and away the best method to promote a small brick-and-mortar retail store. Most people won't do it because they are too shy or think that it is an improper breach of social decorum. But when you have a burning passion for something, those considerations go out the window. I'm not a pushy jerk or anything, but I do walk up and talk to a lot of strangers. And pound for pound, minute for minute, dollar, per, dollar for dollar, this produces the best results for getting the word out about our brick and mortar operation. If a person takes the plunge and comes into our store, they meet our wonderful and friendly staff and they try the products, which are excellent. And after that, they'll leave a positive review online about us or tell their friends. This sets in motion an organic positive feedback loop whereby somebody tells a friend, the friend comes in, they like it, and then they tell another friend. On and on it goes. And it is all so much more authentic than if we go online and try to say how great we are. But it all starts with a single conversation. Now, back to park... <clears throat> Pardon me, got a little frog in my throat there. Now, back to parking lot behavior. I see a lot of things out in parking lots. I'm sorry, I just have to take a quick break here. It just makes me laugh that I spent so much time in parking lots. I'm sorry about that. Anyhow, back to parking lot behavior. I see a lot of things in parking lots. I see hilarious, affectionate mothers doing the funniest things to make their kids happy. I also see some mothers absolutely melting down on their kids and scolding them to no end. Sometimes I walk up to those moms and let them know that we're giving away free hot chocolate in our shop. A lot of times it makes them feel better and cools them off a bit. Sometimes I steer clear because I don't want to butt in. 
I see dads doing the same kinds of things, but I don't see dads being as silly and affectionate as moms. I do see dads disciplining their children, and their deep voice makes the correction sound much harsher. I see a lot of older married couples holding hands, walking to and from their cars. I've noticed that older couples, I've noticed that older couples do this much more than younger couples, which makes me think that this is a generational behavioral trait. I've picked up a rhythm to how people load groceries into their car and then walk around to get into the driver's seat. Almost everybody takes a second to check their phone, and that gives me some time to cover ground and walk up to them if I think I should. I've seen how a look of surprise and caution turns into a look of happiness and appreciation once people know that I'm offering chocolate. I've talked to big, tattooed muscle men who are actually the sweetest and most sensitive folks you can imagine. I've learned which ethnicities tend to appreciate entrepreneurship the most and which are most willing to come check out a new food place. People from India hold the distinction, in my opinion, for being the most fascinated by new businesses. I've also been an impromptu arbitrator for several cases of fender benders. In fact, just yesterday I was walking around when I heard two women having a vicious argument. They were screaming at each other at the top of their lungs. I felt I should step in. So I walked over and I saw two cars busted up with back fend pardon me. I walked over and saw two cars with busted up back fenders. I interjected myself into the dispute and asked what had happened. Both looked at me and launched into their version of the story. I pointed at one and asked her to go first. Sorry, my voice is cracking a little bit because when you get exasperated, sometimes your voice cracks. I pointed at one. No, I'm just kidding. I, po I pointed at one and asked her to go first. The other respected my request and let the first gal tell her side of the story. Then I asked the second woman to tell her side. When the first tried to cut in, I reminded her that she already had her turn and it was fair to let the second woman have her say. She recognized that I was right and let the other finish. The crux of the dispute was that both were backing out of their parking spots on opposite sides of the road at the same time, and they backed right into each other. Each felt sure that they were in the intersection first and that the other should have waited. In reality, it sounded to me like they bumped into each other dead in the middle of the throughway, and both were equally at fault. After hearing both sides, I told them that this was clearly a he said, she said sh situation. It's hard to say. He said, she said, she said, pardon me. After hearing both sides, I told them that this was a he said, she said situation. Try to say it 10, 10 times fast yourself. He said, she said, he said, oh, and put situation on the end. It's not as easy as it seems. All right. After hearing, sorry, now this is the third time I'm repeating this. After hearing both sides, I told them that this was a he said, she said situation. And that we weren't going to be able to resolve it here and now. The only sensible thing to do was to trade insurance information and let the insurance companies work it out. They both agreed, and I told them that I was going to stay while they traded insurance information just to keep things cool. As they exchanged information, the first gal tried to rekindle the dispute and tell her side of the story again. I explained to her that things were just starting to calm down. Why did she want to go and rile everything up again? Again, I explained that nobody was going to win the argument right then and there. We just needed to exchange information. The second woman gave me a little nod and whispered, thank you. Now here is where things got very interesting. As the first woman was handing over her insurance information, she made an admission. She said that she was going through a nasty divorce. She had just come from her attorney's office and received bad news. She apologized for getting so angry and arguing. She had been on edge. And now the second woman divulged something. She was in the store buying items for a funeral. She just lost a loved one. She was stressed out and grieving, and that is why she came roaring out of her car. She apologized too. Fascinating. The manager from the store came out and told both of them that the security camera had recorded the incident. He gave both parties his contact information so the insurance companies could request the video. And I said, well, there you have it. No need to speculate. 
the insurance companies will get the tape and then they'll take it from there. After the two had each other's insurance information, I walked each to their car separately and told them how sorry I was for what they were going through. I also told them how sorry I was that they had to deal with the stress of this crash on top of everything else. I gave each a little pat on the arm and shook their hands and told them to hang in there. Both drove away and I felt pretty good about how things had turned out. My compensation for assisting was a wonderful little lesson. There's almost always something underneath the surface that is causing somebody to be upset. Yes, there are folks who are incurably crotchety and there is nothing underneath the surface. They are who they are. But after talking to a ton of people face to face, I know for a fact that by a very wide margin, most people are even keeled and happy as their default setting. If they are upset or annoyed or get angry easily, something has happened and you can allow yourself, pardon me, if they are upset or annoyed or get angry easily, something has happened and you can allow yourself to make a snap judgment based on their bad behavior. But this sets you up for doing something or saying something that will potentially exacerbate the problem. And that is not a good goal. The other option is to identify the root cause of the negativity, give them a chance to vent, and then let them get back to normal. And that is a good, that is a much better way to go. So there are a lot of good lessons out there in parking lots. And I thank you for giving me a bit of your time today. I hope that you have a truly blessed, blessed day. Got a little mixed up reading there at the end. I'm still not used to reading off a of paper and looking into the video and I got a microphone here, so I'm sorry. But this is a good lesson, good lesson to remember. If somebody is upset, pro there's probably something else going on in their life. And if you make a snap judgment, you probably just make the problem worse. Whereas if you have empathy and compassion and you let them cool off, then you, you probably have a much smoother interaction with them if you just give it a couple of minutes. All right, that's all I got for you today. If you liked it, please click the like button. If you want to get more content like this, please subscribe. If you like good chocolate, fortunatochocolate.com. If you like good books, consider finding Fortunato. The Amazon link is down in the description as well. Thank you so much. Have a great day.